We surface grind large flat plates, 12 inches by 36 inches, and we have to remove an eighth of an inch material on both sides. Cycle time is killing us. What can we do to reduce this? Here's a technique that really seems like common sense, um, but a lot of companies aren't doing it, and it applies to so many grinding operations where you have a lot of material to remove. Uh, so let's take a look at it, because um, it's something that I've had a lot of success with with companies who have a lot of stock to get rid of. Okay, and it's more true with aluminum oxide than with CBN, uh, but it does apply to both. So if you got a lot of material to remove, and typically what people do is they say, okay, well, we need the surface finish that we get, so we'll dress our wheel however we dress it, we'll set it up, we'll let it run, we'll get to the end, we'll take a few finishing passes, boom, we're done. But there's a better way. So let's say the standard grinding is this. We dress our wheel, let's say we do a fine dress, whatever we do, and we grind with our standard feed rate and we get the surface finish we get. Now, if we increase that feed rate, let's say by a factor of two, by a factor of three, we're going to generate more heat, we're going to get burned, maybe our wheel just can't handle it, maybe our motor stalls out, something bad happens. But you're removing, in your case, an eighth of an inch of material. So let's remove almost all of that material certain way and then leave maybe a thou or two thou on the end and remove it in a different way. And here's the way we should do it. Number one is we're going to dress the wheel with a big depth of cut. 25, 30, 40 microns, maybe a thou, a thou and two tenths, a thou and four tenths, something quite large to really open it up. And even more importantly, we're going to race that diamond across the wheel as fast as we can. Super fast, as fast as it'll go. Take a couple passes at it. Don't take any finishing passes. Don't take any spark out passes or cleaning up passes. Just race that diamond as fast as you can across and come back. Your wheel is going to be chewed up. It's going to have a lot of helices on it, but it's going to be super sharp. Now I want you to go and remove most of the material. Not all of it, but most of it. When you do, you're going to find that the grinding power and your grinding forces are a half, a third, a quarter of what they were before. Your surface finish is going to be terrible, but that's okay. We're not worried about surface finish right now. So let's remove that material, but now since our grinding power and our forces are only about a third, a quarter of what they were before, we can crank up our feed rates. Crank up that feed rate by three times. Now our power is going to go up as we crank up the feed rate, but because our forces are so much lower with the sharp wheel, yeah, maybe they're in line of what we had originally, so we don't have any bigger risk of burn, wheel stalling, etc., etc. Remove almost all the material that way. Leave a thou, leave two thou. Then go back, dress your wheel back in. The standard way of doing it, you do a little dull, medium dress, whatever, and remove that last bit of material the standard way. That'll give you your decent surface finish, but you'll have a much shorter cycle time if you do it that way because we've been able to crank up the feed rate with a sharp dress. That's number one. Number two, with surface grinding, what we want is to think about the cross feed. I go to companies that are surface grinding, they got maybe a one inch wheel, the wheel goes across, they have a cross feed over, and they go over a quarter inch. So their cross feed's a quarter inch. So really their effective cutting width of their wheel is not an inch, it's only a quarter inch. And they have all that other bits of the wheel cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. We don't need to clean up. We don't need a good surface finish when we're roughing away all that material. So instead of traversing a quarter inch, let's traverse almost an entire inch. Let's use that entire wheel to remove material. Or maybe not a tire length, let's say 0.9 inches. Something really, really large. That gives us an overlap ratio not of four, overlap ratio of the width of the wheel divided by the cross feed. Previously we had a one inch wheel, a cross feed of a quarter inch, that gave us an overlap of four, so each point on the workpiece gets ground four times. 
We don't need to grind that point on the workpiece four times in roughing. One time is enough. So let's move over 0.9. We get, over, we get a cross speed of somewhere around 1.1. We're using that entire wheel or almost the entire wheel to remove material and basically that'll cut the cycle time down by almost a factor of four. Now when we do the finishing where we've left thou, two thou, 25 microns, 50 microns of material, now if you want to go back to your cross feed of quarter inch, that's fine. Keep cleaning up, cleaning up, take a couple spark out passes, you get the surface finish you want. This method I have used with companies and gotten their cycles time down by crazy factors, by a factor of six, seven, eight, just by using this technique. Dressing the wheel really sharp. Surface finish looks terrible, but that's okay. We go back and clean up that surface finish in the end. It's really just a smarter way to do things. And it seems like common sense, but a lot of companies are not doing it this way. So. Dress like hell, grind with a overlap ratio of one, or somewhere around one. Your cycle time is going to go down a huge amount. Leave a little bit of that, clean it up, and there you go. You got a good surface finish and a short cycle time.